welcome back to our channel way out here. Sorry about the noise, they are splitting firewood, which I'm gonna go help do that really soon, as soon as I'm done with this. Um, today I am making this more rock and roll, spooky version of a Venus flytrap terrarium. And pretty much all I did different was stick a skull in there. But this is my first terrarium, so if you wanna see how I did it and how I made these layers, which are not very good, and you'll see in the video why. Um, keep watching, but it was a lot of fun, and I'm glad I have it, and I'm going to put this out and hopefully keep this guy alive. So, thanks for watching, and let's get started making this guy. This is the canister I got from the dollar store. I think it was only $2. It's like a four-ounce canister. This is what I'm going to use to put my spooky Venus flytrap terrarium that I'm going to create in. I'm gonna put a couple things in it with the Venus flytrap to make it fit in around here a little bit better. So, but first I'm gonna spray paint this lid probably black, either chalkboard black or the um, black stainless steel. And then I'm gonna drill a couple holes in it. That way, I mean, you can take it on or off, but that way it has some airflow to my terrarium. So I'm gonna go do that and then we can get started on putting this together. So here's my lid. It's going to get some holes drilled into it. And since he's here today, I don't have to do this myself, which is kind of nice because it's a metal lid. I don't want to screw up anything. <laughs> take this lid and get some spray paint put on it. All right, so I have the same setup I used for the skull pots. Um, if you haven't seen that video, I'll try to figure out how to link it, but um, I have the same setup. I have a box of empty sparkling water and I have my item I'd like to spray paint on there and I'm going to do the same as I did one of the skull pots. This is the metallic black stainless steel. This has become my favorite color to spray paint with. So I'm going to get this done and then we are going to start figuring out how to put this terrarium together once it dries. Venus flytrap together, this terrarium. Uh, full disclosure, I've never made one of these before. I have not um, had a Venus flytrap before, but they look kind of, you know, a little on the oddball, eerie rock and roll side, so I kind of like them. So I'm going to make one. Um, I did do some reading on the different layers that you need to keep these things alive and the different things that you need to put in here. So I'm going to start with rocks. Some of these rocks I got from our property. I just found them, picked them up, and I'm going to lay them in here. Others um, I got in the bottom of a pot that my mom gave me that had a plant in it. And I switched that plant out to a different pot so I can use the rocks for this. But I didn't wash them or anything. Maybe I should have, but it doesn't really matter because you're going to put dirt in here anyway. So the first layer is just rocks, and then the second layer is like a sphagnum moss. And I have this orchid cactus sphagnum moss. And I had to buy this on Amazon. I couldn't find it locally, but I've had it for a while for my orchids. So I'm just gonna put that in here and make a good layer of this. And this is all about proper drainage and putting things in here that don't have a lot of nutrients. That's my understanding is you wanna water with distilled water. You don't want nutrients in these Venus fly traps because they don't like it very much. So the next thing I'm gonna put in is this peat moss. This is a sphagnum peat moss. And this is gonna be like our dirt for the top layer. 
So I'm going to put some of this in. And I'm doing this on a plate to help me not make a huge mess, but I may make a huge mess either way. But I'm doing it on the hardwood floor so it'll be easy to clean up. And I think I have too much in here because I think the Venus flytrap might stick out the top of the lid. But I don't know. I mean, I'm going to try it and see. We'll take a little bit of the sphagnum moss out. I may have done too much of that. Okay, next thing is just to put this Venus flytrap in here and get it situated in there. I just kind of made a hole like I've done with my other plants. Pop the lid off. And this guy was 10 bucks at my local grocery store. So I don't know how much they normally are because again, when we live way out here, these things are kind of tough to find. So when I saw this and I wanted to have one of these for a while, and make a terrarium and put like my little skull guy in there. I wanted to do this for a while and when I saw this I just grabbed it, you know, 10 bucks, but um, they do not make these easy to get out. And I don't want to touch the Venus flytrap because these are really sensitive. Everything I've heard is that they're really sensitive. So I don't even know if I can break this off and get into this guy. So I may have to speed forward through this through me. scissors but uh, the suggestion was to cut off anything black because those are the dead heads and I did clean this knife beforehand and sterilize it I don't know if you have to but that's generally my rule when I do my plants is I dip my tools in alcohol before I cut anything and even though these are dead it should not matter maybe it does I don't know so again just take everything out of there that's dead now we've got it this is actually a pretty good plant i mean these this looks really healthy what's left of it now that i cut the was it one two three pretty big ones and then some little dead ones off the side so this plant seems pretty healthy so i'm just gonna work it out of here and i've never seen the roots of these guys like in person but this is some pretty damp dirt and again, this is straight from the grocery store. I don't know how they're taking care of these. I don't, uh oh, I think it's gonna come out with roots. All right, that's kind of what I was afraid of. You can see it came out. It's got, let's see if I can get good lighting here. It's got just a root dangling down, but I'm gonna stick this in that little hole I made right in the middle. Get those roots under there. It's not the middle. It needs to turn to the side. So I'm going to try to push this back up. This hole is not, this opening that I made is not very, it's not very large. And it's not very easy to work with. So I'm going to do, I'm going to use some of this dirt that came out of here, that came with the Venus flytrap to fill in this hole that I made. I don't know what this came in. It might be peat moss. And the peat moss that I have, I have never actually used as a medium for anything for making my own soil. I usually just buy organic potting soil or a seed starting mix from our tractor supply. Because that's pretty much all we have here is a tractor supply. So I'm just going to keep putting this in here. I'm trying not to get it in the little heads of the plant. And trying to like perk them up as I go around and push this plant taller, but get get it in there, and then 
I also read for these, you need to be concerned about how you water them. So it's saying, you know, spray it with water. Don't actually pour water in it and spray it with distilled water more than anything. So actually that's kind of cool. I kind of like how off to the side it was. I was a little upset at first that it's not completely centered, but I kind of like it. It may be, this canister may be too short, but we're gonna try it. I'm gonna put the lid on in a minute, but I'm gonna add a little touch, you know, for my rock and roll skull loving self. I'm gonna put this guy, and I got this, I think it was last year, it might have been two years ago, in like a bag that had several of these in them. And I think I just got it from Michaels, but I'm not sure, because we only go to Michaels, you know, here and there. We live, again, way out here, so this stuff is hard to find. So this was something I grabbed when we happened to be in Michaels. I think it was September last year or the year before getting our son his birthday present and it was like the big town when we do our big trip and drive two hours to like a big town that has lots of box stores because it's a ways but I'm gonna put this guy in there I'm gonna push him in so that he stays upright hopefully and yeah that's kind of cool I kind of like the way that looks so you can do whatever you want I think I saw one lady made one of these on a blog post and she put like a like a little um a little mushroom and a little fake frog and a little fake snake like a fake snake would look really cool in this with that skull in there and i'm gonna see if i can find something else and like put maybe some other bones sticking up out of the dirt but i don't really know yet so i'm gonna go get the lid and put the lid on this guy uh it's still outside drying but if it's not dry, this will actually look cool the way it is without the lid, I think. Uh, if the lid doesn't go on without, you know, impacting those, I may just have to set the lid on and not screw it down. And then still have the holes. It should still work the same because they'll still have some airflow. Um, yeah, but that turned out really good. Let's show you again. So I'm going to get a better, when I get better lighting show you how it looks from all angles but I'm gonna go get my lid and then I will be right back okay this is the finished product mess and all we've got little Venus flytrap in the skull you know what this is not the finished product I'm gonna take this out and try again because you can't even see the Venus flytrap so trial and error right so I'm gonna take this out I'm gonna try again I'm gonna try to take a rock out maybe from underneath it, readjust this guy. Take a rock out maybe, and try again. I don't wanna handle this Venus flytrap more than I have to, but you can't even see it. So like, what's the point of even making this if you can't see my plant, which is like the coolest plant that I have probably. Well, one of the coolest. I have a couple that I really love. So I'm just gonna be, ultra careful here and I'm just gonna set my plant back in the pot that it came in I also have a grow pot actually I might do that to give it a little more space because it still has some dirt in it I don't know we'll see let's reach in here and get this guy though I want to again the idea is to handle these as little as possible but also, this is my first time, again, and I kind of screwed up, I think, so I'm going to take some of these rocks out, just so I have more space for some actual planting. Take that one out. Let's take that one out. Okay, let's try that, and I'm kind of mixing up my layers here. I don't know if it'll be a problem. Again, trial and error, like you have to like learn this stuff. And the only way I think that we learn is to buy, is to buy, <laughs> sorry. The only way we learn is by doing and getting these things done ourselves. I don't think just watching a YouTube video makes anybody an expert by any means. So that's why I said I, I have done a lot of research and I've done a lot of looking into what this will entail, but I've never done this. And so, but sharing our experiences hopefully will help others. So we're gonna see if this works this time. All right, it's definitely lower in there. So 
I'm gonna put more of this dirt that came with it in there. And now I'm really just gonna take handfuls of this. And again, this dirt is so, so moist. And I don't know if it's supposed to be, but it is. And I'm gonna try to get it in there. Take a little more of this sphagnum out on the side so you can see it. Yeah, this dirt is wet. Get in there. Push this down. Let's bag them out of there. Get a little more of this. So, I mean, that is a lot better. Let me scroll a little bit right here now. Push that down too. All right, I think that looks a lot better. I think you can see when you're setting it up, you can, yeah, that's definitely better. You can see the Venus flytrap. So I'm gonna put the lid on, I'm gonna set this guy in a spot. Let's see that inside and we'll see how it looks and see if I need to alter it from there. Okay, so this is underneath my grow light that I have by the window. A lot of this, a lot of the plants that I keep here, like this chain of hearts, is a propagation I made. That's actually gonna go to Memphis to my sister. This is um, something my mom gave me that I'm trying to keep alive for her and I don't even know what it is, but it is not doing well. And I keep trying to cut it back and it keeps, I don't know, it's just not doing well. It may not make it. And then, like new plants, I try to get them accustomed by putting them here. This is a burrow's tail, donkey tail. And then this guy is a black alocasia, which is eventually going to go in one of my awesome skull pots that I make, which that's one of them. So, but yeah, I mean, it looks okay. I might have to get a bigger canister for terrarium use because this one's kind of small even for this guy maybe not like wider but taller thank you for watching if you made it all the way to the end i really appreciate it and i really appreciate you sticking through me struggling to make this work but um i have it behind me under my light again um still so yeah thank you thank you to everybody and thank you for subscribing it's crazy um that I've gotten a couple of subscribers in the past couple of days, which is really, really good. Um, we've got a couple more uh, grilling meat videos coming up that my husband likes to do, and we've got a couple more uh, duck videos to upgrade up. We have a couple of duck videos that we're ready to do um, an update on our little ducklings and update on their first aid when they have bumblefoot and stuff. So. Um, yeah, if you like this stuff, consider subscribing. Again, huge thanks to those of you who stuck it out to the end and who help give us the courage and the, the will to continue to make these videos. So that's what we made. Again, thank you. And thank you for subscribing if you have. So until next time, bye.